We're on the road with Mickey, we're gonna have some fun. Regardless of the rain or sun, our trip has just begun. So buckle up, let's go, we're about to start the show. And maybe if you like us, you'll see where else we'll go. Hi everybody, I'm Sophie, he's Mike, and she's Brenda, and welcome to On the Road with Mickey. If you're returning for another adventure with us, welcome back. We are so glad you have returned safely. And if this is your first episode with us and you're new here, welcome. It's so nice to meet you, and I'm going to show you the reins today. First up, we have our cheddar from the Big Cheese, which is basically our Disney news snippets. And then after that, we have our feature topic, which is what we talk about for most of the episode. And then after that, we have our This Day in Disney History, brought to you by me. And after that is our game of Who's Who. And that is brought to you by Mike, my dad. A oh, fair warning, I'm almost never wrong when it comes to this game. I almost always win it. And then after that, Brenda will be giving us a quote from the big man himself, Walt Disney, and it's just going to be amazing. So buckle up, keep your hands, arms, feet, and legs inside the car at all times, make sure you're safe, fasten your seat belts, all that good stuff, and we will see you on the road. It's time to get going. Let's go! Hey everyone, I'm Mike, and she's Sophie. And she's Brenda... Wait, wait, wait. She's she's not here, is she? No, she phoned it in, didn't she? Yeah, she did. Something about being sick of not being at Disney? Yeah, something like that. Anyway, we knew she wasn't going to be here, but we had to get her in the show anyway. That's yeah. Brenda. Hi, everyone. <laughs> and this is Grogu. And that's Grogu. And we are on the road with Mickey. And this is Season 2, Episode 23 for June 7th, 2021. And our feature topic this week is our four-part challenge. Mm -hmm. We, we um, came up with the four-part challenge to talk about what rides we want to ride, one at each park, but also what shows at each park we want to do. So we've got a fun episode ahead. We'll try not to have too much fun. It's it's impossible with Brenda not here. But Brenda, we hope you've had a great birthday and a great week at Disney. And we look forward to seeing you next week. And by the way, our feature topic next week is going to be Brenda's Walt Disney World recap. So yep. get ready, Brenda. We know you're yeah. watching and listening. Anyway. Well, at least we hope you are. But yeah. as everyone knows, whenever we go to Disney, we always have a recap the week after. Mm -hmm. So it makes no sense why Brenda, Miss Brenda, not. should not. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. All so, right. But so, before we get into our feature topic, we've got some cheddar from the big cheese. And mm -hmm. that's some pretty hefty cheddar, I think. Yeah, um, I think so too. Daddy, care to start? Sure. Over at Animal Kingdom, a lot of this, in fact, almost all of this, not all of it, but most of this is Animal Kingdom news. Um, over at Animal Kingdom, it was recently announced that Tusker House Restaurant will be reopening on June 20th. And you can make bookings for the restaurant starting this past Friday, which was June 4th. So if you were looking to make a reservation for your trip at at Tusker House, go for it. And from what I read, Sophie, it sounds like the characters will be there to Ooh. welcome you back. And I hope that's accurate because that's the way I read it. And maybe I just read it wrong. But it sounded to me like characters would be there. Probably still socially distanced characters, but characters nonetheless. So I'm kind of excited about it. Yeah, I'm very excited about it, too. And it's opening the day after my birthday, so I think that's a perfect time. I think it is, too. I think it is, too. So maybe we need to plan. Well, we can't. We got we got too many other trips 
but we'll figure it out. All right. Well, anyway, continuing on with the Animal Kingdom to the cutest cheddar from the Big Cheese that we have this week. The yeah. new baby zebra born at Animal Kingdom has received an update. He is coming along quite nicely and has been named Dash. And I am going to show with you a picture of this adorable little thing. And I'm not quite sure if it'll be warped or not, but let's hope. Nope, it's good. Yay! Can, can you see him? Isn't he so cute? They call him Dash, I understand, because he is always running about. And Aww. yeah, he is cute. He is cute. So Aww. I think that's an awesome picture. I think it is, too. He's adorable. When I first saw this picture, I said, you know what? He looks like a unicorn because I saw his ear and the way it catches in the light. Mm-hmm. And it looked like a horn to me, and I was like, that is a zebra unicorn. That is magical. Exactly. exactly. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. All right. And wrapping us up today, the biggest news, I think, anyway, um, is that Disney has released dates for the Disney After Hours Boo Bash. Now, the Boo Bash is a replacement for Mickey's Not-So-Scary Halloween Party. It is um, taking place on select nights starting August 10th and running through October 31st. Tickets for the August and September dates are $129 plus tax for children under age 10 and $139 plus tax for anyone over age 10. Um, October pricing, except for Halloween, October pricing is $159 for the children and $169 for those over age 10. And that, of course, you have to include tax after that. And October 31st pricing is $199 per person, which um, that seems a bit pricey to me. That but, is pricey. So it looks like we're going in August <laughs> and September. Well, well, we'll see. I also noticed that there is a block of dates right around the 50th anniversary when they are not doing the party. Oh. And the party hours are from 9 p.m. to midnight or from 9.30 p.m. to 12.30 a.m. And if you buy a ticket, you don't need a park pass reservation and you're eligible to enter to go to the Magic Kingdom starting at 7 p.m. Um, the part, but on those nights, it's not like in the not so scary days when the park would close at like six and, and all that this time, the park is still open until, you know, 9 PM or whatever for those that are there during the regular day. So, mm. um, and last bit of information tickets for the events, you can buy them if you're an on-site resident or resort guest you can buy them by phoning in on june 8th or you can wait and buy them online for anyone starting june 15th um but the my understanding is there's limited numbers so i don't know exactly how much availability there will be for those june 15th dates you know so it's just something interesting and um, worth looking at. And if you need any help with that, you can reach out to Brenda and I. Um, Brenda's at Brenda at PixieVacations.com and I'm Mike at PixieVacations.com and we'd be happy to talk to you about that and a trip if you're interested in, in planning a trip during those days. So, um, okay. so just go check it out and let us know. Um, and of course, as always, check the show notes for our ways to connect with us. Um, we got our groups, and we got our YouTube, we got our Instagram, we got our email. So hit us up and let us know. But that is all the cheddar from the big cheese. Um, our feature topic is the four part challenge. And like we said, Brenda is not here, and mm -hmm. but she is here in spirit. Yep. So I think before we begin, 
We should probably explain the rules of the four park challenge to those who don't particularly know it, because to me, there are rules to any challenge. Yeah. Um, but real quick, Brenda is living the dream at Walt Disney World, and she's not worrying about her four park challenge choices. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she's lucky. She doesn't have to choose just one of each. Yeah. All right, Brenda, your 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 choices are done. <laughs> Moving on, Sophie, tell us the rules. Tell us what we're thinking here. Okay, so the rule is, you have to complete everything in one day. Mm -hmm. And well, you have to choose a ride from each park and a show. And really, that's all the rules that there is. You can only choose one. You can't go more, not until the challenge is over with. And then you, well, let's hope you have more than a day planned at each park. Yeah. But for <laughs> this, this is kind of the thing that you do um, as like your last day before you fly out. You know, see what you can get done kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and I updated a time that you had, Sophie. I did that deliberately um, oh. for the rise of the resistance. So, thank you. In that case, Good. well, you. <laughs> okay, looks like I need to change one more detail. Okay, so let me know when you're ready. All right, I'm ready. Okay, and you. I guess I'm going first. I'm going to go first, I think, unless you want me to. But I am I got you going first. I'll go first. Okay, so, since Daddy already spoiled part of my surprise, the first step is to get up at 7 a.m. and get a boarding pass for Rise of the Resistance. Mm -hmm. So now you know what I'm doing at Hollywood Studios. <laughs> After that, I spent a leisurely hour getting ready for the day i'm just getting dressed getting awake all that good stuff and then i take the first bus over at eight o'clock to make sure that i'm at animal kingdom by nine o'clock bright and early when the park opens because i checked the park hours okay and my ride at animal kingdom has got to be Expedition Everest. I love Flight of Passage, don't get me wrong, but Expedition Everest is one of my favorite rides at Animal Kingdom, and I just want to do that instead, and I have a feeling that despite it being rope drop, Flight of Passage's line is going to be extremely long because everyone is trying to go there first. Yeah. So. Expedition Everest, and then my show is Festival of the Lion King, because that is my favorite. Not just one, it is my favorite. So I have to make sure I get that in. Yeah. Next up, after I do that, I hop on a bus and go to Magic Kingdom. Okay. Now at this point, people may be wondering what ride I'm going to go for at Magic Kingdom. Some might be thinking Splash Mountain, others might be thinking Big Thunder, but no, I'm going for the Haunted Mansion. Nice. I know that it's, yeah, I know that a lot of people are going to be like, Sophie, you only get to choose one ride and you're choosing the Haunted Mansion? What about Splash Mountain? I don't care. The Haunted Mansion is my favorite at the Magic Kingdom. And my show is Mickey's Philhar Magic because I like the 3, 4D effects of it, and it's just so awesome. And the music is just incredible. Yes, the music is amazing. Yeah. yeah. So by that point in time, we're going to the Riviera for a quick lunch because next we take the Skyliner over to Epcot. Where did you eat? Just got a dessert from the Riviera's dessert place. Okay. okay. Yeah, that's my lunch. You know I don't eat healthy. Tell all you eat pretty healthy. So anyway, <laughs> so now you're taking the Skyliner to where? Epcot. Okay. And at Epcot, many people would expect me to choose Soren, but... The, the line for Soren is way too long for me to consider it worth it when I'm on a park challenge. 
So I instead go for Spaceship Earth, and nice. then I get... But first, before I get there, I take the long way around and do reflections of China for my show. Because okay. I love the China Pavilion. I love it, love it, love it. It is just so pretty and so mm -hmm. wonderful. Okay. So by this point, it's getting late in the day, and my boarding pass for Rise of the Resistance is also very late in the day. So I hop back on the Skyliner, I go to Caribbean Beach, I have a quick dinner there, just because I can, and then I go to Hollywood Studios. Now here's the thing, my ride might shock you. Yes, it will totally shock you. My ride is actually Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, and my show is Fantasmic. After I do that, my challenge is complete, and I can reward myself by using my boarding pass for Rise of the Resistance and going on that now that the challenge is done. Okay. All right. Boom. That, boom. She threw an extra one in there. <laughs> the challenge is complete. I thought you were going to say that the show was Rise of the Resistance because it's like you're immersed in, in an actual movie. I do not consider it a show, but nope. So that was my way of shifting the rules because now that the challenge is done, the rules no longer apply, and I got in my Rise of the Resistance. There you go. You heard it here first. Sophie made up her own rules. And no, that's okay. I did not. Hey, there's no wrong answers at Disney. The challenge is over. The rules were <laughs> followed. <laughs> Okay, okay. Well, <laughs> anyway, that's that's okay. That's okay. So, it's on to me, huh? I got to close this out. Yep. Wow, we're actually going through this, like, really quickly. This is going to be a short show if we don't make up something else to do. Well, we'll see. So... I didn't worry myself with any of the sorts of things like, you know, getting up a certain time, doing a boarding zone, any of that. Um, just because I wasn't really all that worried about all that. Um, um, I was like, you know what? I got four parks. I got to pick up, pick an attraction at each and a ride and a show at each. And that's it. So that's all I worried about. So I went in order of, my favorites which starts at magic kingdom um and i decided this day i am going to ride seven dwarfs mine train and um it's not my perfect disney day so i didn't have to worry about lines or anything but um but there were no lines anyway because we got there early so i rode seven dwarfs mine train and then i'd been thinking a lot about shows and for some reason i keep thinking back to country bear jamboree and mm -hmm. so that became my show was country bear jamboree i gave a ton of thought about using carousel of progress as my show or um or the um the one you did mickey's fill her magic you know that sort of thing but i decided country bear jamboree is where it's at um and so that's what I did. I did Country Bear Jamboree as my show. And then from there, um, it almost was my perfect Disney day because the monorail from Magic Kingdom to Epcot was running. And I rode the monorail over to Epcot. And I went for Frozen Ever After. Ooh. Which... I'll admit we don't ride nearly as much as we ought to. And it's typically seems like it's because the lines are really long. Um, but I decided, you know what? I need to give it a little bit more love. It's not quite appreciated as much on my bucket list of things to do. So I, I skipped by test track. I skipped by um, spaceship birth. I skipped by soar. I skipped by grand fiesta tour. And I went over to Norway, and I rode Frozen Ever After. And wow. the line wasn't as bad. Knock on wood. <laughs> but then 
After that, I went over to the American Adventure and I did the American Experience show. That is what I did for my show. And I thought it was really good, as it always is. And from there, I said, you know what? I'm in World Showcase. I didn't plan any lunch, but you know what? We're there. Let's eat at the Regal Eagle. So I got some, some ribs at the Regal Eagle, and I had some baked beans, and they were really good. And I had a nice Diet Coke to go with it. Um, but then I'm still in World Showcase, so I walked over to the International Gateway. Instead of doing the Skyliner, which I absolutely love doing the Skyliner, instead of doing that, I took the Friendship Boats um, from, from Epcot's International Gateway over to the Beach Club and Yacht Club, and then I changed and got on the other boat that takes us over to Hollywood Studios, because that's where I went next. That and, is a good idea. You know, it takes a little longer, but it's still a fun little ride, and, and it's kind of cool. Um, when I got to Hollywood Studios, my show was Muppet Vision 3D, and yes. my attraction was not Rise of the Resistance. It was Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run. And I was put in a group with a whole bunch of other people to make six, and we were able to enable Chewy Mode. So there you go, Sophie. We had Chewy Mode. Oh, nice. It oh, got Grogu a little... Was... Grogu, Grogu was excited. You yeah. were saying? I said it got a little dicey because Chewy was trying to eat a porg. But we but we stopped him and everything was okay. <laughs> so he did wow. not have his his snack. So wow. And then after that, I took a bus over to Animal Kingdom, and um, and I know the buses don't typically go straight park to park. Um, at least I don't think they do. I, we don't do this very often, so I don't think they go straight from one part to the other. I could be wrong, though. Um, but anyway, semantics, that doesn't really matter. Um, but we went to Animal Kingdom, and Mommy and I rode Expedition Everest because she magically appeared. <laughs> and she's nice. like, if you're riding Expedition Everest, I'm going to ride Expedition Everest, too. And then... We walked over because she likes Festival of Lion King too, and I walked over with her to Festival of Lion, and boom, you were there, and so we Woo! all, so we all saw Festival of Lion King. That means you saw it twice. <gasps> yeah. So there you go. Yes. And that completes my four part challenge. After that, I guess I just rode the bus back to the resort. Um. You know. Okay. All I right. like that. That's good. So we actually asked this question in our Facebook group. Remember, it's facebook.com slash groups slash on the road with Mickey group. Um go check us out. We actually asked the question, what is your four part challenge? And I told them, you know, we're talking about it. I want a park and a ride. From each if you if you have it and um and we had one two three four five people respond so sophie why don't we take them and divvy them up okay i'll read tony's okay. and then you read jennifer and cindy's and then i'll read dana and sheila's how about that all right okay so tony tony said that for magic kingdom he is going to do Seven Dwarfs Mine Train. Good choice, Tony. Good choice. Um, and for his show, he is choosing to transport in time to Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party. And oh he gosh. is going to watch yes. the fireworks for, my, for Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party. Oh my gosh, that's a great idea. So... It is. It has just become Tony's perfect Disney day. Wow! <laughs> yeah, that's a great Disney day. <laughs> and at Epcot, it gets better. At Epcot, he is going to do Test Track, 
he probably built a car. I'm, I, tell me if I'm wrong, Tony, okay? Um, and he is going to watch Illuminations. That is an amazing Of one. course, that's an awesome fireworks show. And you know what? I, I can't wait to see what Harmonious brings to the table. And hopefully it will be a good replacement for Illuminations. Because I loved Illuminations. Oh, yeah. For Hollywood Studios, he called Sophie and said, Hey, Soph, when you're building out your boarding zone for for Rise of the Resistance, get me one, too. And so he said, of course, Tony, <laughs> who are you? <laughs> oh, but you're anyway, with my dad? Sure, let's go. Anyway. And so he rode Rise of the Resistance with Sophie. Yep. And then he we went and watched Fantasmic. Fantasmic, yeah. It was, like, awesome. <laughs> and then lastly, he went to Animal Kingdom, where he did Flight of Passage. And then he met up with us. To do Festival of the Lion King. That is a great four park challenge. I it love is. that. It is. And then, of course, Miss Jennifer, oh, absolutely a woman after my own heart, her Magic Kingdom ride was also the Haunted Mansion. And yes, girl, yes. And of course, <laughs> Her show was the Festival of Fantasy Parade. She's actually not a big fan of the new fireworks show. That's interesting. Oh. And then for Animal Kingdom, she hops over. She does Expedition Everest with me and you and Mommy. Mm hmm And then we all go and watch Festival of the Lion King together with Tony. Yep. This is getting yes. to be quite the party. Yes! Before we know it, we're going to have to get a villa or something at one of the resorts and just keep on partying into the night. Maybe, maybe the treehouse. Yes! Oh, that would be so cool. Just I've phone up Disney. Hey, we're extending our stay for a few days. Hope you don't mind that. Yeah, exactly. Brenda, and, you got to join us. <laughs> yeah, come on. We all know that you're going to go watch Festival of the Lion King with us. That's a given. And then at Epcot, she goes and rides Living with the Land. That is an awesome ride. I love that one. And her favorite show used to be the British Invasion Band. Not sure what she'd stick around to watch now, she says. Hmm. And you know what? That's okay. Yeah. Personally, I like Reflections of China, but the Canada show is also very nice and of course the beauty and the beast sing-along is so cute yeah. That's and maybe great. maybe she would go to the amphitheater and watch voices of liberty that's true so that's true or, the garden, or if she wants to do some time travel like tony did she can go and watch the garden rocks show exactly yeah all right, and then after that, Miss Jennifer is hopping over to Hollywood Studios, and she's going to ride Tower of Terror, a great choice, and she's going to watch Beauty and the Beast live on stage. And you know what? I actually did not realize that that show still existed. For some reason, I always <laughs> think that it's not playing anymore, but Beauty and the Beast live on stage... It is such an amazing show. It is great. I loved that show. And I would yeah. love to watch it with her. Yeah, I would too. And it, and it, it's not running right now. Hopefully they'll call back the actors and they'll put it in production. Yes. But um but you're right. But right now of course it's not because of COVID and whatnot. Yes. So. All right, carry on. All right. Cindy is this mommy or is this yeah. a different Cindy? This is mommy. <laughs> okay, just making sure. Yeah, because I'm looking at all of her options. <coughs> you know what? Yes, that looks like a bunch of stuff that I know mommy loves. So, we start out at Magic Kingdom for mommy, now that I know it is my mom. And we are riding Big Thunder Mountain Railroad first thing in the morning. Right as the park opens, we're going there. Daddy, you're coming with us. I'll go. I'll go. 
Yes, and the show for the Magic Kingdom is the Cavalcades. I'm pretty sure I know which one would be out about first thing. And that would probably be the Tinkerbell Cavalcade with her sitting on that moving treasure chest. And that's a good one. I like that one. She It might be. You know, yeah. she liked them all. She didn't have one specific. Yeah. She told me she liked them all. So. To me, the Tinkerbell one is the best just because it's the first one that I saw. And then we move over to Epcot, and we're right in Soarin', and we're going to the Beauty and the Beast sing-along. That's a great show. I like that one. And then Hollywood Studios. Mommy is riding Rise of the Resistance with me. And she actually chose a very awesome show. I don't consider this one a show, but I can see how it would be. She chose One Man's Dream. Yeah, the movie part. Yeah. I forgot that there was a movie that involved movie in that. movie is like 15 minutes. Wow. It's a really in-depth movie. So. Yeah. so that's a good choice. I'm impressed. Yeah. And then... We're finishing out at Animal Kingdom. We're riding Expedition Everest all together. And the Nemo musical, that is the show that she would choose. And you know what? That is a great show. I love that one, too. I really like all of the live on stage shows that Disney has. And I'm sad that I haven't seen them in so long. So I hope I get to see them again. Well, hopefully... I don't know though. Um, Nemo is officially closed, so I don't know. I don't know if it'll be back. Mm-hmm. I mean, it doesn't look good, but who knows? Disney changes their mind sometimes. So, I loved Nemo the Musical. Yeah, Finding Nemo the Musical is a good one, but um, to me, it doesn't compare with Festival of the Lion King, though. No, it doesn't. But it's still a good one. The use of costuming and puppets in that show, it is amazing. Yeah, it is. Anyway, moving on, Dana. Dana wrote in, and she said that at the Magic Kingdom, the Seven Dwarfs Mine Train is her ride. And she considers Carousel of Progress to be a show, and so do I. And that is her show, is Carousel of Progress. That is a great show. Yeah. Now, she also, over at Animal Kingdom, she chose a ride that she's never done before. And that's Flight of Passage. Dana, you need to talk to me. We need to hook you up and get you over to Disney so you can ride Flight of Passage. Because I am telling you, it is absolutely phenomenal. It's like you're on, it's kind of a soaring sort of environment. But it's like it's your own personal sorn, you know? So Ooh. talk to me, Dana. Let's let's get you booked on a trip and let's plan this out for you and your family. But um in addition to Flight of Passage, she also chose Nemo um for her show. So and so then that's your cue, Disney. Get Nemo back. I know a lot of people are liking finding Nemo the musical and they're reporting it in. Um, And then she chose Epcot as her next park, and she is going to do Soren. She doesn't have a show choice here, and that's okay. She's not sure which show she would pick. So, you know what? I think that just gives her great incentive to go see all the shows, and then she can report back with an update. I agree. That is a good thing. I like that. And then Hollywood Studios, Dana is going old school. She is going to do Toy Story Mania. Awesome. Ooh, yes. And she's going to be watching Fantasmic. (laughs) I hope Fantasmic is back soon because it is such a good show. And we've never seen it at Disney World. We've only seen it at Disneyland. Disneyland, yeah. So hopefully it comes back soon. Yeah, I and hope then, it does too. Yeah. And then last but not least, Sheila, this Aunt Sheila, she actually did the four park challenge. Really? Uh huh. She said, We have done this one time. We went to the Animal Kingdom first and they did Flight of Passage. 
then they went to Hollywood Studios, and she pulled a good one out, too. They did the great movie ride. Oh, goodness. Now, of course, she wouldn't be doing the great movie ride. She'd be doing Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. Although, in her perfect Disney day, the great movie ride is back for this one time only. Oh, yeah. And then she went to Epcot, and they did Spaceship Earth. And then... The last, they went to the Magic Kingdom and they did Seven Dwarfs Mine Train. And they only did one show that day, and that was Carousel of Progress. And that is a pretty darn good show. And you know what? Maybe they should just make Carousel of Progress at all four of the parks. (laughs) Not all four. It only fits in the Magic Kingdom, I think. And maybe Epcot, but I agree that it is a good show. Yeah. Yeah, so maybe they just rode Carousel Progress four times in a row. Yeah, that works. There you go. So that's how they did it. But anyway, those are great submissions, people. Thank you so much. We love hearing feedback, and I love when you all report in on what you guys are doing. And it yes. just it just adds an element to the show that we just really like. So so thank you everyone for responding, and mm-hmm. that. Wraps up our feature topic for this week. And that brings us to this day in Disney history for June 7th. And I think Sophie has a boatload of Disney history to talk about. Yes, I have four items listed here. But I'm only going to talk about three. Okay. So, there are two years... They are side by side, and of the four, two are two items are in each. So I'm going to start with the oldest year, and that is 1940, June 7th, 1940. And it's during, it's on this day that Disney's Donald Duck film, Mr. Duck Steps Out, directed by Jack King and written by Carl Barks, is released and in this in this film Donald visits the house of his new love interest for their first date but their time alone is soon interrupted by Huey Dewey and Louie who have followed their uncle and want to compete with him for the attention of Daisy Duck nice. Clarence Nash supplies the voices for Donald as well as Daisy and Huey Dewey and Louie and that is I believe that is actually the cartoon that Daisy debuted in. And I think that she's actually called Donna in this one. Let me find out while you keep talking. Yes. Let me do a quick search. Also on this day, singer Tom Jones is born Thomas John Woodward in Wales. He is a very special character near and dear to my heart. He voices a very special character near and dear to my heart. And that character is known as the theme song guy. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that's literally what he's called. And he is from Disney's 2000 The Emperor's New Groove. Having sold over 100 million records with 36 top 40 hits in the United Kingdom and 19 in the United States. His hits include It's Not Unusual, What's New Pussycat, Green Green Grass of Home, Delilah, and She's a Lady. Mm -hmm. I had no idea Tom Jones had anything to do with Disney whatsoever. Yep, That's funny. Well, he does. And here, have you got my info yet? Yes, I do. Okay, so, please go on. So, Mr. Duck steps out. Daisy Duck is a cartoon character created in 1940 by Walt Disney Productions as the girlfriend of Donald Duck. Daisy Duck, Donald Duck's girlfriend, had her debut as Donna Duck in Don Donald in 1937, but oh. was first known as Daisy in Mr. Duck Steps Out in 1940. Oh, wow. So, so I was halfway right. You were halfway right. 
she definitely was Donna, but she was Donna in another one in 1937. And then she became Daisy for 1940. And trust me, she is so much better as a Daisy than a Donald. Oh, yeah. What do you think, Donna. Grogu? Do you agree? Than a Donna, yeah. Yeah, and, Do- yeah, and Grogu agrees. agrees, too. He thinks absolutely she's better as Daisy. Yes, and here's Hands the down. theme song guy. Here he is. That's the theme song guy with Cusco. <laughs> Isn't he great? He's awesome. I love him. That's funny. <laughs> yep. He's great. That is awesome. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Do you have more history for us? I do. And this is my last one. And this one is very special to me just because it involves a lot of history. And it seems, it kind of gives you that sense of hope. And this one happened six years later in 1946. BBC TV in England returns to the airwaves after a near seven-year absence due to the Second World War. In an attempt to emphasize continuity, the first day's program includes the cartoon Mickey's Gala Premiere, the same Disney cartoon that had aired on September 3rd, 1939, two days after the Nazi invasion of Poland. Originally released on July 1st, 1933, the cartoon features several famous Hollywood film actors from the 1930s. Nice. That's awesome. And that is cool to continue that, have that continuity, you know? Yes. Wow. And that that just speaks volumes about Disney as a company and how far back we're talking here, you know? This yeah. Is 2021. This was, what is that? 70, I think. 75 years ago. Yeah. 1928 was when Mickey Mouse debuted. Yep. So in seven years, he's going to be 100 years old and he's still going to be bringing all of this joy to children. Exactly. Exactly. Well, Great stuff today, Sophie. Thank you so much. Great history. I love the history. So, yes, I love it too. Anyway, time for our game. Time to stump the sofa. <laughs> this time I do need to put my glasses on. Sorry for my ring light look in one of my lenses, but it's okay. I'm going to turn this way. You won't see it. So, I have one, two, Three clues, and I think you will get this. Okay. Well, don't make it too easy now. I'm hoping I'm not. Um, this character is a timid and well-meaning young man. Okay. He is the new garbage boy. Garbage boy. And he has a highly unusual relationship with another character. Garbage boy. Timid. Um. You need one more clue? Yeah, sorry. Don't try to make this one a dead giveaway, though. Um, he has a very famous father. And I don't know what else to say about that without making it so easy. That he doesn't even know is his father. Uh, Linguini? Exactly. <laughs> Did I make it easy with that? No, you didn't. That was a good one. Alfredo Linguini. Oh my gosh, she's even named after food. What on earth was Gusto thinking? <laughs> well, he wasn't. He didn't name him, really. It was 
Disney that named him Alfredo Linguini. <laughs> Still. <laughs> and I have two bits of did you know? One you already know because you said it. Um, Linguini's name is based on Italian food. Alfredo is a type of cream sauce that Sophie absolutely loves. It's my favorite. It's used in pasta dishes. And linguine is a type of pasta, which she also knew. Mm -hmm. And here's the funny part. And I don't know. You probably knew it, but had probably blocked it out. Linguine wears the Incredibles underwear. (laughs) I think you find out. When I he gets woken up scene. in the apartment, yeah. <laughs> no, it's not that one. It's not that? Okay. I remember the scene, and I'm not going to mention it at all. Okay. So anyway, Alfredo Linguini from... Ratatouille. Ratatouille. I think I spelled that wrong. I don't know. Yeah. But we'll fix it. Anyway. Yep. And that brings us to Brenda's Walt Disney quote. And I'm going to give the quote today. And I am giving it in honor of my buddy, Jorge. And Jorge is a pixie who is having to leave. But um. He will always be a pixie, in my mind, anyway. And let me share the image um, while I read the quote. So hang on one second. Okay. And the quote from Walt Disney is, Around here, however, we don't look backwards for very long. We keep moving forward opening up new doors and doing new things because we're curious and curiosity keeps leading us down new paths. Walt Disney and Jorge, this one's for you, buddy. I love that movie. I do too. I do too. Um, just for the record, my background is Mr. Grogu and the Mandalorian And it's a t-shirt I'm actually wearing. And it says, this is the way. And I got that shirt at Kohl's. So if you all have Kohl's around you, go check it out. It wasn't that bad a price. And it might be worth looking into. It's one of the first times I've not worn it on the road with Mickey gear in a long time when we recorded a podcast. But I did this because... I wanted to wear the shirt so Sophie could see it because she hadn't seen it. And yeah, I hadn't seen it. She super wants one now. <laughs> yeah, I desperately want one. So when are we going shopping? I don't know. But anyway, um, before we wrap up, I just want to say that we have two sets of listener picture submissions. Photo submissions from Heather and Holly. And those are the last two I've got. So I need people, if you want to have your photos showcased on the YouTube, send yeah. us some in and we'll we'll put them out there proudly. And we love seeing them. So thank you so much for everyone that shared them. And I look forward to having more to share. If we don't get any more, that's okay. We just won't we just won't mention it. But um, but I would love to see some more photos. So hopefully others will share some soon. Yeah. But anyway, that wraps us up, Sophie. Okay. Brenda, safe travels back home. We missed you. And yeah. We're looking forward to seeing you back on air with us next week as we go over Brenda's Walt Disney World recap. And until then, Sophie and I and Grogu will we'll see you, see you on, on the road. road. Bye. Bye. Awesome.